noch mehr Hintergrundinformationen zum Thema Star Trek. Danke, Thorsten. So, guten Morgen. Ich möchte Sie auch herzlich willkommen heißen hier zu unserer Pressekonferenz von Star Trek Operation Enterprise. Ich freue mich. Ich darf jetzt Marina ein bisschen plaudern. Da ich selber eine geborene Amerikanerin bin und sie in England groß geworden ist, das werden wir auf Englisch machen. Ich glaube, das kriegen wir gut hin. Falls was nicht klar ist, können Sie gerne äh, nachhinein auf mich zukommen und ich kann das ein bisschen erklären nach dem Bühnenprogramm. Und die Marina selber auch ist hier im Laufe des Tages, steht auch äh, zur Verfügung für Interviews. Okay? Gut, dann will ich einfach sagen, wir starten. Firstly, Marina, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Alles. Is that right? No, Alle. not right. <laughs> Alle. Okay. Almost. <laughs> Good job. Um, first of all, I just want to thank you so much for taking the time to be with us today. We're absolutely thrilled to have you here in the park. I'm thrilled to be here. This is an amazing facility. I've never seen anything like it before. And as this is the 30th anniversary of TNG, I've, like I said, this is unique. It's fantastic. Uh, it's probably the best ride, amusement, park thing that I've ever seen, ever. So, well done to everybody. Well done, Torsten. Well done. It's all good. It's all fantastic. Thank you. That really means a lot for us. So, I, I did prepare some questions. We are, of course, since, uh, since you're a professional actress, and you were in the series, we're very, very curious to hear a little bit about that experience, and also the first impressions of our attraction here. So, first question. You did seven seasons for Star Trek, The Next Generation on TV, and four blockbuster movies on the big screen. Star Trek, The Next Generation, was the biggest Star Trek show on TV. How did Star Trek change your life? Um, in every way. <laughs> uh, when I got the job, um, I, was ha I had no money, literally nothing, in the minus column. All my credit cards were full. Um, I was going back to England because my, I had a ticket and my visa was running out the next day. And uh, it pretty much did a one, my life did a 180 from here to here. And uh, all good things. I mean, really, um, I, owe, I owe my life to Star Trek. I owe everything I have to Star Trek. I owe my husband, he's American, I met him. Um, when I was in America. So everything that's important to me, Star Trek gave to me. And um, we have the most loyal fans in the history of show business. Yeah, it's very impressive. It's very impressive that 30 years later, they still want to come and see us. It blows my mind. Um, it was the best thing that ever happened in my life, by far. I can imagine. Good, then I'll move on. Everybody in the world knows you as Counselor Troy. What does this mean for you? Is there a normal life after Star Trek? Yeah, there is actually, because um, I don't get recognized. I'm not Patrick Stewart. You know, um, Patrick Stewart can't step out of the door and he gets recognized. Um, I don't have the Troy hair. That was a wig. It came off at night, went on the wig stand, and people expect to see hair and they expect it to be dark. And so I can live my life like a normal person. I'm very lucky in that way because not many actors who've achieved that level of success can live a normal life. But I'm just a normal housewife when I'm in LA. I go shopping and you know go to the dry cleaners and cook and all those things. So I think it's very important for actors because we can be very um, isolated and we don't live a normal life. So I feel very blessed that I can be a normal person in Los Angeles. Um, and to be honest, there are way more important and famous people than me in Los Angeles. So uh, I'm not that far up the uh, totem pole. I think you did okay for yourself though. <laughs> okay, um, we celebrated 50 years of Star Trek last year. You can see here from our brand new attraction, Star Trek is still very alive, still very present. What is the mythos behind Star Trek? What do you think makes it so special that it appeals to so many audiences over so many years? I think it's the, the philosophy of Gene Roddenberry, who created the, um, the franchise. He had a very positive view of the future. He thought that as human beings, we would evolve up. Um, 
you know, in his in his universe, there were no wars, um, there was no money even. Um, that we had evolved into a higher state of being. I have to be honest, when I look around the world today, I'm not sure his vision was correct, but I think the fact that he gave us hope, the hope for a better future, I think that's very appealing. Also, we were very inclusive. It didn't matter how you looked, what mattered what was in your heart and what was in your mind. And um, I think that's very attractive to a lot of people who possibly feel that they don't fit in in society. And Star Trek is a home for them. I can imagine. Good, I'll move on. Um, we were very excited, as Torsten was saying, to have the license for Star Trek and then worldwide. So you see from the attraction, based on the next generation, Federation Plaza, you saw a little bit in the attraction, the bridge, the pre-show archives. What are your first impressions of our attraction? The bridge is perfect. Everything, actually, everything's perfect. I feel like I'm back on the, in the studio. Uh, the first thing I wanted to do was go and sit in my chair. <laughs> so, because there it is. Um, it's very impressive. I think you guys, when you see it, will be amazed at the detail um, and the quality of the work inside. Like I said, I've never seen anything like it. I've been to other um, Star Trek attractions. The only thing really that I would compare to this um, would be the Star Trek experience in Las Vegas. And I think this is probably better, um, to be honest. Uh, it sounds you, good. Yeah, it really no, it really is because pretty much in the in the Vegas one they took you through the bridge and then you went on the ride. But here there's so much more to see. There's something to see even when you're standing in line. So um, I think it's I think it's going to be great. And Germany is um, the third biggest market for Star Trek in the world. Uh, this is why we always come to Germany because you guys are Star Trek crazy, and we love it. Thank you so much for supporting our show for so many years. Um, it's the perfect country, I think, to have this attraction. Yeah, we're, we're very happy about it. I was just gonna ask you, you talked a little bit about the bridge. Does it bring back memories for you? Do you feel like a little bit yeah, in the I'll, film sets? I did, I did, I wanted to sit in my chair and pretend that Captain Picard was sitting next to me and asking me questions. It's very, it's very, um, makes me a little homesick for uh, the bridge, yeah. Okay, you'll have a chance to sit in your seat uh, shortly together with Torsten for some photo ops. Which they didn't let me do in Las Vegas, actually. They wouldn't let me sit in my seat. And uh, they sent security to come and move me. And uh, they picked the wrong person because I'm, I'm, I was like, excuse me, this is my chair. And like, you can't sit there. And I'm like, excuse me, this is my chair. I'm staying right here. So uh, at least I get to sit in my chair on your attraction. Thank you. Of course. So we are an amusement park and it's a roller coaster. Um, obviously the coaster, as Torsten was saying, it's built by Mac and it's a very high-tech coaster. So for coaster fans, amusement park fans, we know that we, we will have some interest. But do you think for Star Trek fans that they would be excited about what we've actually built here? Well, I think they will because, well, first of all, people come to an amusement park to go on roller coasters. That's the main reason they go to an amusement park. The fact that you have, it's not just the roller coaster, you have a Star Trek experience. It's not just going on a ride that goes round and round and round. There's so much more that you have here. Um, I mean, I'm looking over here at Starfleet Academy, um, the, the uh, Star Trek Center. This is un unbelievably um, excellent. I mean, really, it's an excellent facility. Um, I think you're killing two birds with one stone. You've got the Star Trek fans who are going to come and see the facility, and also you have just the um, the people who want to go on a new roller coaster. So it, it kind of covers both bases. Great, good to hear that. So um, basically, that's it from our side. I really appreciate again you taking the time. We're absolutely thrilled that you are here. I brought and the weather with me. From <laughs> thank California. God. Yes. So thank we are you, German people. Danke. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thanks again very thank much. You. Herzlichen Dank, uh, Mora and Marina. And Marina, be sure security will not move you okay. out of there. It's yours today. 
so uh, we have some opportunities later on, uh, despite the fact that I'm not Patrick Stewart and not Captain Picard. So I'm sorry for this. There's a bald guy. Yeah, there is one guy, maybe, Oliver, who looks uh, close to him.